Coming up in the hi-fi hobby, there really were two brands that personified quality entry to say mid-level electronics, and that was NAD and Rotel. Every hi-fi shop back in the day that I visited hoping to lure new customers to the fold carried both of those brands. I was always partial to NAD myself, but that was mainly because I could afford them, but that never stopped me from listening to Rotel gear every chance that I could. Some years later, I am finally able to bring some Rotel home for myself with the A11 Tribute Integrated Amplifier. So subscribe, hit that like button, and let's see what makes the A11 Tribute so special. Yeah. Now the A11 Tribute was designed in cooperation with the late great Ken Ishiwata, who many of you may know as the engineer behind some of Morant's more high-end products. Rotel pays homage to the man and the legend with the update to the original A11, thus making it the tribute. This stereo integrated amplifier boasts 50 watts per channel into 8 ohms, courtesy of its class AB design, and features a built-in moving magnet phono stage, 4 RCA analog inputs, as well as a stereo preamp out for adding a separate amplifier or subwoofer. There are two sets of five-way binding posts capable of powering two sets of speakers, either in the same or different rooms. Bluetooth with Aptex and AAC support rounds out the Tribute's features. The Tribute's design is straightforward, yet still elegant. While not a large piece, it feels substantial in terms of its build quality, and I find it rather striking in either silver or black. I would have preferred to see a slightly better display, however, across that front panel, one fitting of the modern minimalist amp. The display is good, it's just not great. It is legible, gives you all the information that you need, but I don't think that it's very compelling or competitive in today's market. Also, about that tribute badge, given that this is a tribute to Mr. Ishiwata and his just remarkable achievements and, well, frankly, influence on hi-fi, the badge seems like an afterthought and I would have liked to have seen it etched into the amp's faceplate itself, maybe across the entire top of the faceplate, because that would have been a fitting tribute, pun intended. We paired the tribute with just about every speaker we have, and for the purposes of this review, we're gonna go ahead and focus on three of the more cost-appropriate options, given the more modest price of the Rotel itself. Today, we'll be talking about the Monitor Audio Bronze 100s at just under $600 a pair, the Wharfdale Evo 4.1 speakers at just under $700, and raising the bar just a bit to the KLH Model 5s at $2,000. Though the bulk of our listening was done through the Evo 4.1s, all three loudspeaker pairings were phenomenal with the Tribute. I primarily used two different sources. The Audio-Technica LP140 XP turntable fitted with the Ortofon 2M black cartridge and the Andover Audio Songbird music streamer, which is functionally identical to the Arillic S50 Pro, only it has fewer connection options and comes in at a lower price. For Bluetooth testing, I used my iPhone. So what does the A11 Tribute ultimately sound like? Well, the Tribute actually reminds me a bit of another great integrated amplifier from my past, the Krell KAV400XI. The Tribute, like the Krell, is incredibly composed, detailed, and dynamically interesting, but unlike the Krell of old, the Tribute avoids becoming overly forward or aggressive when pushed, or if you pair it with the wrong speakers. So the Rotel is sort of a, it's sort of a Goldilocks integrated in more ways than one. Bass through the Tribute has great texture and grip, controlling the low end of every speaker without a hint of strain, and in some instances sounding a little deeper and a little bit more resolute when compared to other amplifiers, such as, say, the Cambridge Audio AXR100 that has twice the power. More importantly, at least to me, is the fact that the Tribute's bass gets that point of impact essentially right. Kick drums, bass guitars especially, have that low end snap that you know that I love, and it's enjoyable even at lower volumes. The Tribute's mid-range is virtually colorless, though don't mistake that as sounding lean. Artists do not sound like warmer or richer versions of themselves, nor have they gone full Atkins and dropped a freshman 15. Vocals and instruments sound as they should, with that same attention to detail found in the bass on full display throughout the mid-range. The Tribute has real presence. Vocalists or even solo instruments, they don't, they don't project themselves to a false sense of presence. No, they have greater separation in space, resulting in a more grounded and dimensional feeling. While this is not unique among integrated amps, it is rather uncommon at the Tribute's price point, something we're gonna talk about a little bit more in just a moment when I get to the soundstage. Now another area where the Tribute manages to differentiate itself from the pack is in its high frequencies. The A11 has incredibly extended but composed treble response. 
It's not rolled off or laid back in an attempt to be more forgiving, but it's also not aggressive or fatiguing at higher volumes. Like the mid-range, the Tribute's treble performance has just incredible focus, so much so that it may come at the expense of some decay, and I'm emphasis on some. The trailing edges of notes are present, but they may not hang around in space as much as through some other amplifiers. Though I'm gonna argue few amps at this price have true body to the high notes the way the Tribute does. The Rotel may trade some air and some decay for greater dimension. For example, the Rotel gets the impact of a drumstick hitting a cymbal just bang on, while also conveying the mass of the cymbal itself, whereas other amps at this price point often miss that last part entirely, opting instead to wow you with their extension and decay. Which is right is ultimately gonna be up to you, but the Rotel's highs aren't so much ethereal as they are focused. Which brings us to the Tribute's soundstage. I'm gonna go on record as saying the Tribute isn't likely going to be, well, the most impressive amp with respect to soundstage, if, if you think a good soundstage is all about maximum width and depth. There are amps like the Cambridge Audio AXR100 that open up a recording better than the Tribute, but the Rotel feels more accurate and intentional. So if you want to be bowled over by boundary defying width or depth, perhaps the Tribute is going to pull up just, just a little bit short. But if you want pinpoint accuracy, true separation, and three-dimensionality between the speakers and a foot or two beyond, the Rotel is going to have you covered. As for depth, I found that the A11 conveys a greater sense of depth than it does width, so it's definitely putting the stage back in soundstage, rather than trying to communicate the entire room or hall, unless of course those attributes are in the recording. Honestly, the Rotel's spatial rendering between the speakers themselves is so incredibly focused and well delineated that I think you're going to have to spend a lot more to notice much, if any, difference in performance in this regard. Yes, it is that good. And as for dynamics, the Rotel has solid dynamics, so I found the amp really hits its stride when you turn things up. This is not unique to the Tribute, as everything is going to sound a little bit more alive as you apply volume, but where the Rotel again steps away from the pack is in its ability not to get messy and lose focus as you ratchet things up. Moreover, it's the Tribute's dynamics down low in the bass that I find most impressive. There aren't many budget-oriented integrateds with the Tribute's low-end torque, so to speak, and once you experience it, it, it makes everything else seem just a little bit soft or worse, mushy by comparison. As for drawbacks, I have only one. For some reason, more so than any other product we have in-house, the A11 Tribute appears susceptible to electrical noise or ground loop hum. On its own, the amp is virtually dead silent, but plug another component into it or into the same wall outlet and potentially it's gonna be hit or miss whether or not the noise floor of your system is going to rise. To give you an example of what I'm talking about, connecting my turntable to the Rotel's internal phono preamp, there was a notable increase in tweeter hiss from my speakers, not to mention a hum from the mid-bass driver, which was audible from about three feet away. Disconnect the turntable, sound was gone. I was about to write off the internal phono preamp as possibly noisy, but then I simply plugged the turntable into a different wall outlet and problem solved. While I could write this off as being an issue with my home's power, no other component in our home exhibits this trait when plugged into the same outlets and the same associated equipment. So I have to think that it has something to do with the tribute. Not every situation or component is going to cause a rise in background noise, but if you buy this amp and you experience this trait, you may have to experiment a little just to eliminate it. Now, as for comparisons, I compared the tribute primarily to the Cambridge Audio AXR100, which is a 100 watt per channel stereo receiver with largely the same functionality as the Rotel, only it adds a capable DAC to the mix, as well as an FM AM tuner. I'm not gonna mince words. In terms of sheer value, at $500, the Cambridge wins. Full stop. I honestly cannot think of another component that offers as much for so little as the AXR100. That said, if you're not into chasing features and are looking for an integrated under a grand whose sole focus is truly refined sound quality, the A11 Tribute is that amp. The Cambridge, while very good, does sound just a little bit more ethereal, a bit less focused, and a touch fatter down low in comparison. The AXR100 does little, if anything, that I would ultimately deem as offensive, especially considering its cost, but that said, the Tribute is just better across the board. So do I think the added investment in the A11 is worth it? 
To me, yes, but I understand completely if you side with something else like the AXR100 for less money. Other comparisons included the Cambridge Audio AXA35, the Denon PMA600NE, and the NAD C338. Now the AXA35, like the AXR100, is embarrassingly good for the money. At half the price of the Rotel, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of budding enthusiasts go with it over just about anything else. I mean, if I were on a strict budget, but looking to build a solid two-channel rig, I'd look long and hard at the AXA35. Now my full review of both the AXR100 and AXA35 are coming soon, so stay tuned for that. Now as for the Denon, compared to the Rotel, I'd skip it. The 600NE is okay, but it's not great by any means. It doesn't best the Cambridge nor come close to upsetting the Rotel. It's an option, but that's really all that it is, an option in an endless sea of options. Now the NAD C338 is a great integrated amplifier and very comparable to the Rotel. I raved about the NAD and I consider it to be among the better integrateds under $1,000. While my younger self would have likely had to go with the less expensive NAD, adult me would totally splurge for the preferred sound of the Rotel. The NAD sound is just a little richer, it's a little darker with a little bit more subdued highs that give it a signature wholly unique to NAD. And if you like the NAD sound, which I do, the C338 is great. But the Tribute just hits different, and I like its slightly better detail in focus, not to mention its greater dynamic snap, which is why I'm picking it here. So the Rotel A11 Tribute is, in my opinion, a fan-damn-tastic integrated amplifier. I'm not sure there is an outright better, higher-end sounding integrated under a grand than the A11 Tribute. Had Rotel included a DAC without affecting the price, something that we know other brands are currently doing, I don't think the Tribute would have even had an equal. I'll also say that you'll probably have to step up to something like a Yamaha AS1200 or a Musical Fidelity M3SI in order to get any appreciable differences in sound quality. And even then, you may still prefer the Tribute. So if a 50 watt per channel stereo integrated is what you're after and you don't mind spending just a little bit more for sound quality rather than features, the Rotel A11 Tribute is a no-brainer. So that's it. That is my review of the fantastic Rotel A11 Tribute, but enough about what I think. What does Christy think? Well, I mean, you know I'm an AB girl, so <laughs> you know I liked it. Yeah. I thought it was really good. Um, I had never heard anything from Rotel, so honestly I didn't have uh, any real expectations. Like I didn't know what, what to expect from it, but I thought it was great. Um, it's a, The amp, like you said in the beginning of the review, it really did pair well with I mean, I, with everything, I can't think of a single pair of speakers mm -hmm. that it didn't go well with or, yeah. you know, made sound worse or, you know, which does, ha which can happen, yeah. you know, with speaker pair, uh, speaker and amp pairings. So it was a very solid, uh, solid amp to mm -hmm. me and, and it produces this k kind of sound that I like, yeah. which is a bit more lively. Um, I'm, I'm going to agree with you about the styling. I, I mean, I think that it's really nice. I like it's a really clean looking amp mm -hmm. um, as far as the design. I, I do think the badge the yeah. is a bit of a like. It's a throwaway. I don't know. I mean, I, I know that we pay a lot more attention to those kind of details than probably any other channel that reviews this, these, this type of stuff. Um, but. And I know that there are going to be people out there that, you know, they're not going to care. Mm -hmm. They're not going to care. I think that these are types of uh, conversations that are important because style is important. And there, there is, there's nothing that says you can't be both stylish and sound good. Right. <laughs> you know, so right. I know that there are probably people that think that we pick about, pick, pick on stuff like this too much <laughs> and they maybe just want us to move on. But I think when you're paying good money for products there's nothing wrong with ex having expectations for every aspect of of a piece of a of a product and that it goes from the sound quality to the design and i and i i'm with you i think the the badge i mean at the very least they could have moved it to the left side um, yeah, or the right uh, upper right corner or something like know, that. You know, it just wasn't, it's just like, I feel like they didn't think about um, symmetry or a any, you know, it's yeah. just ball dropped. But it's such a nitpicky 
thing um, that I know a lot of people aren't going to care about, but I care. Well, I care too, and I don't. I don't think it's a nitpicky thing because there's already an A11, and you have an A11, and you have the A11 tribute, and I get it. What Mr. Ishiwata did to the A11 tribute is all internal. And those aren't things that you get to see. Those are things that you get to hear and experience, but you don't necessarily get to see them. So the fact that the only thing that differentiates the tribute from the regular old A11 is looks this, wise, it anyway. looks wise, is this tiny little badge, I think is a missed opportunity because if you're calling something a tribute, you're paying tribute, it is a special edition of sorts. Mm -hmm. Like it, you really have to differentiate it from something that is just a regular old A11. It, it would be one thing if the A11 Tribute was its own product, you know, and there weren't other A series products that have this look. That's fine, in which case, oh, well, it doesn't look like anything else. But the fact that it is literally an A11 with a little bit of a badge visually totally missed opportunity. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. Um, but beyond that, you know, um, I think that there are my 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 other questions or you know concerns mm -hmm. about the the tribute and this really comes from you know a lot of times I'm pulling things that we might be comparing this to um whether it's something we have in house that we've like actually listened to right. and compared it to or maybe I'm trying to think of well what other components similar to this that's in the review, are you guys at home maybe considering cross shopping against? Yeah. So for me, like I was looking at the Yamaha and I know you mentioned the Yamaha AS1200 as being along with the Musical Fidelity M3SI as, you know, if you're looking to step up in terms of sound, in terms of sound, yeah, you know, which also you have to step up in price to accomplish. Yeah, um, you know, is there another Yamaha piece that they might shop with against this? And I think that they may be looking at the Yamaha um, AS five hundred one, hmm. maybe the eight hundred one, yeah, because um, they're relatively similar in price. Yeah, and and I and I think this is kind of a point you brought up in the review, like. They didn't include a DAC, mm -hmm. and I don't I don't really get why. Um, if if there are there are several other um, competitors that are giving you that for yeah. less, yeah, it makes me think. It kind of makes me cringe a little bit, and 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 like go, oh, I really wish you could have done that because then it could leave no question as to what right. Of like really separating yourself um, from other other uh, other brands. You know? Sure, and I think even if they included a DAC in just the tribute, that would have helped to also differentiate it even better from the regular old A11, as old as that model may be now. Um, I can see why they didn't include a DAC. I know many people are probably going to think it's a cop out, or the reasons don't justify. The, the end results, uh, because there are, there are, I mean, the NAD C33A, I mean, the AXR100, you get DACs for that. Um, I would like to think that it was a kind of an audio hi-fi purity thing and enabled them to get lower distortion figures, lower internal noise figures, mm -hmm. maybe, perhaps. Um, but that said, they included Bluetooth, which is notoriously noisy. Um, and I, and because there's Bluetooth, there's a DAC inside. Because you have to convert that Bluetooth signal to analog, you know. So there is a DAC inside the A11. You just don't get uh, optical or coaxial or USB, you know. So um, it's it's a conundrum. It's it's a bit of a conundrum for me. Um, I think had they not included Bluetooth, it becomes a harder sell. But I also I also can sense comments coming where it's like they should have just left all the digital off of it completely and make it an entirely an analog thing and then you add your own digital components because digital changes all the time. So yeah, I mean, in terms of a value proposition, 
from a sound only standpoint, I think the A11 Tribute is rock solid because the AS1200, the uh, M3SI from Musical Fidelity, those are all double the price. Almost, I think they are exactly double the price. Um, but again, if you're like, well, I can get these features for this, the, the A11 Tribute is charging a premium. They right, really are. Right, yeah. And I just, I, I would love to see more people take take a look at this, but I know that there's a lot of, it's a big jump in price when you're talking about, it's about a $300 price jump between the Cambridge yeah. that we've ta- you talked about yeah. versus up to the, uh, yeah. the Tribute. And I think they, if they if they had included the DAC, they could have really closed the gap and made the that extra cost feel more oh completely um, justified easy to swallow yeah. so to speak. Yeah, a couple totally. other things I wanted to bring up because I know a uh, we've definitely I've seen a question from uh, one of our viewers and then I can anticipate questions. Okay, um, one has to do with the Forte fours. I know somebody commented on Instagram wanting to know or hoping that you were going to talk about the pairing, which technically you didn't. So yeah. I'm going to give you the opportunity to answer that person's question. I think the pairing of Klipsch Heritage products with the Rotel A11 Tribute is fantastic, whether that's Heresy Mark IVs or Forte IVs, because we, we did them both. Um, much like the NAD C338, both are great, though I'm going to argue that the A11 Tribute brings out a little bit more of that dynamic punch that those Klipsch Heritage speakers are known for. So if you're looking to kind of tune a Heritage speaker, take some of the edge off, maybe the NAD is going to be a better fit. But if you want to retain all of the sort of magic that makes Heritage speakers special, I think the A11 Tribute is fantastic. And it, and it manages to keep everything very composed without letting anything go astray or become too much of one thing. Um, and again, that, that woofer control in the Forte 4s with the A11 Tribute is, is fantastic. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't shy away from that pairing at all. Okay. Yeah, I, d- I didn't either, but yeah. I wanted to make sure we answered that. Sure. And the only other thing I can think of that people are probably going to bring up or mm-hmm. maybe maybe have questions about is, well, why didn't you talk about any Marantz comparisons? Yeah, I mean, knowing that Mr. Ishiwata was involved so heavily with Marantz and also involved with this product, it makes sense, right, to want to compare his Marantz work to this. And I can't because I haven't heard those specific Marantz products. I've definitely heard Marantz products, but they've been more or less more uh, home theater or lower end integrated amplifiers from like a year or two ago, if you watch this channel. And those weren't necessarily his signature components. I don't know, or I'm not saying that he may not have had some sort of influence or say or touched them in some way, but those aren't the Marantz products that you think of when you think of well, Mr. Ishiwata. So I didn't want to speak out of turn. I didn't want to say something to the effect of, you know, this is so much better than his Marantz gear um, because I don't know for sure. And better is, you know, relative to the individual. But um, I wish I could bring you that answer. I really do. It's been notoriously difficult to get Denon and Marantz products in house for a number of reasons. Um, You guys can speculate all you want, but it's not easy. We've ended up buying a lot of these and I would have gone out and bought one of the Marantz products to do this, but we have four plus thousand dollars currently tied up in other purchases for this channel and I just I just didn't have it. So I understand that may be a ball drop, but I didn't want to comment on something I hadn't heard. If you had to guess, like is there a, a Marantz a piece that might might be uh, similar or yeah I mean I don't know the model numbers off the top of my head um, the new Marantz integrated and in SACD player that just came out is it like the model 30 the model or 30 that's gonna be in a different league I think because that's like three grand each piece so we're not gonna say I'm, I'm not gonna go out on the limb and say the tribute is competing with that um, but the call it the eight to twelve hundred dollar range of Marantz stereo integrateds, I think you're going to find are going to be comparable here. Um, 
I, 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 I feel strongly about the tribute in the sense that it does manage to compete very favorably with products that are in that sort of thousand to fifteen hundred dollar mark. Um, because when comparing it directly to products in or, in and around that price point, given all of the amplifier topology is the same, there's not a lot of difference. I mean, we're talking single digit percentage points here. Um, and so, yeah, I think that in my opinion, I would spend less money and get the tribute over maybe even something that has more money and maybe a little bit more power, unless of course I needed that extra power. For example, like I wouldn't put the tribute on something like Martin Logan or Magna Pants. It may be able to do it in small to medium rooms, but if you want to get if you want to get rowdy, um, you're probably going to need the more power of say an M3 or M5 SI or greater. In which case, yes, you need to spend more money. But for like Wharfdale's uh, Monitor Audio Paradigm PSB things like that, um, be it, maybe not B and W. But you know stuff like that. Um, the tribute's going to do great. It's going to be enough, uh, definitely enough for any clip speaker. Six hundred M's, eight thousand RPs, Heritage, you name it. It's, it'll it'll do it. Okay, cool. Well, that's it for me. That's it for you. Yeah, I think we can wrap it up and get lunch. So that's it. That is now our review of the Rotel A11 tribute. What did you guys think? Let us know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, my question of the day for you is this. What are you more willing to pay for, sound quality or features? Let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe, and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. And speaking of subscribing, you're gonna wanna make sure that you subscribe. If you're watching this video and you're a fan of Hi-Fi and you have not yet subscribed, you're gonna wanna make sure that you subscribe now because we're about to hit 200,000 subscribers and I don't wanna let the cat out of the bag, but we're going all out. And subscribers to this channel, trust me, trust me. Subscribe, make sure that your subscription status is public so I can see that you are described. And we're gonna do a whole video on how to do that, but just little heads up, little uh, preview, but you're gonna, you're gonna wanna be subscribed for that 200,000 subscriber video. It's, it's a big one. Uh, if you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, know that that is a great way that you have continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here. And both of us, thank you all very much for doing so. Uh, check out our new merch and follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile. And that is, that's it. That's it for me today. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you on the next video.